Hello again, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome back to Men of War Assault Squad 2. Today, we're going to be starting our tutorial series on building defenses in Men of War Assault Squad 2 with the Rob's Realism mod. So if you want to download that mod, make sure you check down below in the description and go to the Google document down there in order to download this fantastically wonderful mod that adds many new units and features to the game. We're going to start as the Germans here today, and we're going to defend against a Soviet attack that will be coming in a few minutes. So I'm going to go over the basics of building very very, very basic defenses and preparing to take on the enemy. So we're going to be digging foxholes, setting up mines, and also some other hedgehog emplacements to try to deter the enemy's attack and destroy them completely. Here are some German Opel Blitz trucks that are carrying some troops as well as a few guns. You can see that in this game uh, vehicles can tow guns such as the Pac-40 which is a 7.5 centimeter or 75 millimeter gun as well as a auto cannon, a 2 centimeter Flak 38 which is great against light armor, infantry, and of course its original design aircraft. Let's go ahead and get to the front. We're going to be defending up here on this hill today and the Soviets who are looming in the village are about to start their attack very soon. We've set them up here in the editor in order to uh, basically mm, create some sort of a scenario. We have a tank against us as well, so we'll see if we can destroy that tank and set up defenses. Over here we also have ourselves the Opal Blitz 3.6, which is an engineering truck which carries a lot of materials, as well as two AP miners here, or an anti-personnel miner, and actually an AT miner, anti-tank. So we'll get started with that as well. We're going to be defending with a mortar, and we're going to look at the differences between the MG-34 and 42. If you are unfamiliar with these guns, the 34 is an earlier model of a machine gun made by the Germans, and the 42 is a faster firing model uh, of similar design. All right, let's go ahead and get our troops to the front line. We'll go ahead and uh, click and uh, right-click on all these units and get them to where they need to go. Left-click, right-click in order to move things. So we'll go ahead and get everything in place. Now we've got a lot of riflemen with us today and they'll be uh, digging a lot of the trenches and foxholes that they'll be using to fight. So we're going to go over everything one by one. And again, if you want to see more of this and want more tutorials, ask for what you'd like to see next down below in that comments section. And make sure you like other people's comments too if you agree with them. For example, if the next popular thing you all want to see is how to uh, effectively use, let's say, uh, oh, I don't know, let's, let's say radio men to call in mortar strikes, then make sure you go ahead and let me know down below. And make sure you click the like button too to let me know you like this series and would like to see more. All right, let's go ahead and get everything up to the front line. And uh, we'll park in line here and get all of our troops deployed. And we'll get uh, some troops mounted onto those guns as well. All right, looks like everything's arriving nicely. Okay, let's get everyone assembled. Everybody out of the truck. There we go. And we'll just get our troops into one large blob. Now, when you're playing the game regularly, you probably don't want to do this as one uh, artillery shell or uh, one shot from the enemy could destroy all of your troops in one fell swoop, so make sure you don't do that, but of course this is just for tutorial purposes of setting up defenses, so we'll go over infantry formations another time. Alright, we can also uh, ask the drivers of the trucks to get out as well by pressing G. Uh, this icon pops up then, this is a hotkey that you can use to have all your troops exit vehicles, so by pressing G they will get out of the vehicle and uh, they'll report for duty here. Alright, so just so you know, in order to move any of these uh, types of equipment used by the Germans, you'll need two men in order to move it, and one man at least in order to fire it. So if you put two men on there by right-clicking, they can now carry it around. So this is the uh, SGRW-34 mortar, and so we'll go ahead and move that into a position somewhere on the hill, and we'll have our troops carry that over there somewhere as well. All right, let's do the same with the MG-34 and MG-42. And these can be purchased from the menu on the right side if you're playing a multiplayer match. So that won't appear at the moment, but keep in mind that should be under the uh, support weapons. So you should be able to purchase the MG-34 and 42s. We're just going to get them up on the hill for now and we'll put them into a position later. And so that's the basics of putting men onto equipment or possibly taking them off. You can do the same here in this case where they will abandon the piece of equipment as well as needed. Alright, let's get these guys up to where they need to go. And let's find out where our... Uh, oh, looks like we... Uh, <laughs> Lost one of our boys already. Oh, actually, our AT miner seems to be under a different uh, control command. So those are exactly what those troops look like. If you call out AP miners or AT miners, they will just simply be armed with that equipment at the start. All right, let's get some of our uh, vehicles to uh, detach here. If uh, we press this button down here, which is Shift plus G, it will uh, actually detach from the weapon. And I think you actually have, a, have to have a troop inside there in order to do that. Well, there you go. Never mind, you don't need that. There you go. So both guns are now on the ground, and they can be transferred as well. 
so let's go ahead and put two men on those as well. And now our Pack 40 anti-tank gun and our 20 millimeter will be occupied with uh, some soldiers there. And look at all these infantry. It's quite a lot of infantry. All right, now one thing you want to do in this game is a very important part now is in order to prepare to set up our defense, we're going to create a line here. And that way the Soviets will have to uh, run into a line of German troops that will actually be in cover. There's a lot of natural cover in the game, and by natural I just mean in the map itself, such as these uh, brick walls or stone walls, any sort of hard cover. There's also concealments such as bushes and such, which will make it a little harder for the enemy soldiers to hit you. You can also take cover behind vehicles and such. But in the case of there not being any sort of defense, such as a farm field, you can make your own defenses by digging foxholes that they did in World War I and World War II. So if you click on this soldier here, any soldier really, and click on something called Use Item, which in the lower right side of the screen is the gear, you can see that you have the ability to build a breastwork, which is a wall of sandbags. You have the ability to build a, sh a shallow foxhole or a deep foxhole. And those are uh, basically for soldiers to lie down in or to sit down in and fire at the enemy. Let's go ahead and uh, create a little roadblock over here to watch our flank. We don't want the enemy to sneak around our right side. So we'll go ahead and dig, uh, dig a foxhole here by right clicking. I've chosen the direction for that. So essentially I've clicked deep foxhole. I've right clicked and I held in the direction I want it to point. So that way it's pointing directly towards the enemy down the road. Let's do that again. And we'll do it a little faster. Use item deep foxhole, right click, and point in that direction. You see how the arrow points in that direction? You'll be able to uh, aim the direction of the defense. Fantastic. All right, a very important reason why the engineering truck is here as well is because we can have shovels in this game, which will allow us to dig deeper. Rather than just the spade that regular infantry are given to dig in, this allows us to build much bigger trenches. In this case, it allows us to build uh, the deep foxholes. Actually, I think if we... Uh, get rid of this here, the shovel and bags, it'll give us more options. There we are. We have a big foxhole that we can dig, or a long trench, in addition to the other two that you previously saw. Let's go ahead and dig a long trench, as you would imagine. It's essentially just a long line for troops to take cover in, so we'll make that the backbone of our defense. Only one soldier can dig at a time, and the time that it takes to dig these holes is pretty accurate. The bigger the hole, the longer it takes to dig. Let's go ahead and start with another shovel. We'll do the same thing as we did before, and we do need to drop the breastwork. It seems to be a glitch or uh, some sort of uh, overriding factor in this game where it'll put the uh, deep foxhole in here several times. So in order to dig, make sure you take out, and by doing this you'll press I, as in Iroquois, or Iodine. You'll have to press that in order to bring this menu up. You can additionally, I believe, uh, click on an inventory button somewhere around here. Uh, I think if you maybe just click examine on your old soldier, it'll pop up. But we're just going to drop that simply by clicking and dragging. You can see it fell on the ground. And now we have ourselves another shovel where we can dig yet another foxhole. We're going to dig a big foxhole now, which allows for two or three soldiers uh, to take cover next to each other. And these are very similar if you've seen Band of Brothers before. These are pretty similar uh, trenches to what you may have seen in that show. All right, let's go ahead and get another shovel. And we'll dig another big foxhole on the other side of the long trench. And essentially, that will create three points of defense. All right, let's get some other things up now. And let's take a look at the differences between the hedgehogs. Now, if you remember hedgehogs from World War II, you may have seen those uh, on the beaches of Normandy, which are essentially, they look like jacks or uh, large X's on the ground made of steel. That makes it very difficult for tanks or armored vehicles to sneak by. And in Rob's Realism, there's two different types that you can build. You can build the anti-vehicle hedgehog or the anti-tank hedgehog. The differences are the anti-vehicle uh, can be easily knocked over by tanks, and thus it blocks armored cars or light vehicles. That's where the anti-tank hedgehog is pretty much indestructible unless you're destroying it with TNT, which is very unlikely. So we're going to go ahead and build an anti-tank hedgehog out here to block possibly enemy tanks, and we'll do that uh, a few times. And each one of those hedgehogs that you grab allows your soldier to build multiple of them. So we'll take a look on how to build multiple defenses at once. We'll take a look at the difference between the anti-tank and the anti-vehicle. So let's build an anti-vehicle hedgehog out here. You can see there how it looks a little different than the standard hedgehog, which you'll see on the field in just a moment. All right, let's go ahead and get some more uh, weapons up this time, or defenses. 
We're now going to take a look at AP mines, or S mines in this case, anti-personnel mines. Of course, if an enemy soldier happens to step on it, it explodes. Essentially, it's like a grenade that pops up out of the ground and will wound enemy soldiers around them and uh, incapacitating them. All right, you can see here that this trench has been dug out. We have our first trench up and ready and that the soldiers can move around it. It's got a little bit of concealment here. This is, of course, uh, a kind of a, a glitch with the map. Uh, where a grass is not going to be removed by digging a hole. Obviously in real life it would, but in this case it's just an effect on the ground in the basic map building. You can see here the slit trench is also done as well. So this is uh, room for about eight soldiers, eight to ten soldiers. Machine gunners can go in here, many other troops. And uh, same with this trench over here. So it looks like there's about room for three and about uh, eight to ten in the center. So let's go ahead and start getting our troops in there. One thing you can do to easily occupy a position is gather several soldiers and as you can see here the white highlights show the direction that they'll be pointing. The enemy will be approaching from the farm field in front of us here so it's good for us to just right click and have that done. Oh there we go. Looks like the first anti-vehicle hedgehog is down. Again that'll block armored cars or light vehicles but it won't block tanks so in order to do this we're going to uh, place another one over here and see if we can block them. Over here you see the larger anti-tank hedgehog, much bigger, about the size of an actual man. So that takes a while to, to uh, build those. They take up a small amount of space, but they can make it so a tank has to stop and turn, which could expose its side and definitely slow down a, a rush that may be pushing through. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at mines now. As I mentioned, the AP mines, we're going to take a look at AT mines as well, and that's anti-tank. Keep in mind that anti-tank mines can only be set off by a tank, and anti infantry mines can be set off by a tank or by troops. It's all based off of weight. These two soldiers here are carrying mines, so we're going to put them out into the field to see those in effect in just a moment. In the meantime, let's go ahead and continue to fill our uh, uh, foxholes with troops. Now, if we had some sort of a machine gun at this moment, we could actually have a soldier uh, grab a machine gun and uh, occupy one of those trenches, but mostly our troops don't, aside from our uh, Let's see here, our two stationary machine guns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a flanking position over here. Flanking mean, meaning we're going to fire from the side where the enemy may not see and will be a little less likely to shoot at. So we're going to put it over here. And what I'm going to do is as soon as this trench is complete, another one that looks like this, I'm going to put a machine gun in there in order to uh, block the enemy's ability uh, to fire at it so easily. We're also going to build a position for our mortar. So let's go ahead and go back over to the truck again and uh, make sure that we uh, take our sandbags out. We're going to take another shovel. And these shovels only come in these engineering trucks, which is why I'm showing it, and it can be purchased in the special menu as well. We're going to dig another trench back here for our mortar, and uh, we want to dig it in some sort of an area with a little bit of clearance because a mortar has to fire up and over. So we'll see that in work in just a moment. A very, very important uh, piece of the puzzle here and if someone could timestamp each one of these lessons I would greatly appreciate that down below in the comment section is mines. Mines are very important, very very important and we're gonna go over the differences one more time. In this game there are anti-tank mines which are a four slot uh, basically uh, this is like a standard landmine of World War II that you would see anti-vehicle and this is the S mine for the Germans which there's only two types of mines in the game it's just a standard mine for either side so all mines work all the same, even though in World War II there were many different variants. So keep in mind that there's just two types of mines in this game and they all work the same, but very differently between the two. We're going to go ahead and put down what would be uh, AT mines first, or anti-tank mines. And we're actually going to put those, in this case, in front of our AP mines. So if we click the gear, you can see that we can put down mines. If you left click in this game from where your soldier is, he'll lay down the mines like this in a uh, somewhat of a line. But I'm the type of player that likes to lay them out myself more spaced out than that. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to hold shift and we're going to click one, two, three, four, five. Now the reason I've spaced them out this much is because it's more likely that the uh, enemy tank will be hit by one of these mines in the track if we cover more space. You can see how quickly they can be placed. Now for infantry you can do the same here 
And one dirty trick to do is, for example, if you're defending a position, you can put mines around the trench, so that way if the enemy happens to take your position and the enemy player sends their troops up to take it, they'll have to uh, go through the minefield, which is right by your defenses. So that's one dirty trick you can do. But in this case, we're going to put our defenses a little further out. And uh, we can also do this, where we left-click and uh, just put a very, very dense uh, field of defenses here. So you can see that these are very tightly knit. And uh, but just by uh, left clicking like that, the game will put them automatically in a line for you like that. Yeah. We'll go ahead and let the computer do that. The AI uh, set it up like that, but we'll see the differences between placing those two in just a moment. Oh, meanwhile, it looks like our uh, hole over here is complete. Our uh, ditches have been dug by these two soldiers. Very good. We'll put them in those positions. You can see these are the small foxholes. These are enough for just one man. Uh, they're a, a deep foxhole that uh, they can take cover in if, if they come under fire. And it looks like our position for the machine gun is now finally complete. Let's bring over one of those machine guns. Let's bring over the MG42, and we'll have the soldiers walk over here, and we'll get that set up in just a moment. All right, it looks like the position for the mortar is also ready. So let's go ahead and put some more soldiers in the trench, and let's get that mortar over here. So again, we're going to double right-click in order to have them pick it up. They'll automatically go in that direction. And one thing to keep in mind in this game... Actually, let's go ahead and turn these engines off. I think we can do that, can't we? Oh, I guess not. Seems like they're still running. Somebody left the engine on. So one thing we can do in this game is, for example, let's go ahead and put the mortar out here. Another good lesson to know is that there are uh, directional fire modes in this game. In other words, you need to uh, keep in mind that if an enemy is in front of you, you need to have your mortar pointed in that direction. So. For example, if I press R, we can rotate in that direction. The troops will drop the mortar and they're ready to fire. As you can see, if I press control, we can angle the fire and control it. If I left click, they'll fire the mortar and they'll start shooting in that direction. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if the enemy st started to approach from the road, we do need to direct that fire. The dotted lines going left and right are its field of fire. So if enemy soldiers are directly to our left, we won't be able to engage that unless we click here, change artillery position. This will allow the troops to pick it up. If you press the rotate button or hotkey R, they'll turn in that direction and they'll be able to engage those troops. You must do this every time. If you uh, right click like this, you can also do that as well. Sometimes it's a little easier to make sure that they don't move by just clicking this button and force rotating. That's why I do that in multiplayer games. There's a lot of lag and the game will eat your inputs. So simply a right click sometimes isn't enough. So it's sometimes better to make sure you've confirmed it that way. But to each their own, you can do it your own way. We're going to put that uh, mortar in that hole, and we're going to uh, get ready to aim it at the enemy. We'll do the same with the machine gun. Essentially, it's the same thing. A machine gun can only fire wherever the gun is pointed, so if the enemy is behind us, we need to pick up the gun and fire in that direction. All right, let's hope this actually works. This could actually hit the ditch, which sometimes happens. It all depends on how the, uh, how the tr uh, trench was dug. In this case, uh, it's a little bit on a hill, so if you watch here carefully, our troops here are a little too low, so they'll hit uh, and fire right into the dirt. So that's not good. So we want to pick up the gun and bring it a little closer to the edge so that way it elevates the barrel. If you watch the barrel of the gun, you'll notice that it'll go down when we tell the troops to sit down because they're actually setting up the tripod, and now we can fire from here. So it actually is usable. You just need to have a little finesse. Remember, pressing control will allow you to direct control troops. And that is extremely important when you're throwing a grenade or something, but that's a tutorial for another time. So let's go ahead and put that soldier in there to cover the machine gun. And now we have a concealed German machine gun nest over here that will cover for when the troops advance over this direction. Looks like the minefield's nicely set up, very tight and uh, neat. You can spend all day setting up mines and anti-tank defenses. They take the most amount of time and have a very big payoff in deterring the enemy. For example, since we have a minefield here, it might be smart of us to put barbed wire and uh, hedgehogs on either side to try to lure the enemy down the center. So if they want to attack down an e easy avenue, they'll have to go that way. All right, we have another trench shovel here, so we're going to use this for our uh, other machine gun. You can put machine guns directly in the center, or you can put them on the flanks, as I've chosen to do. And it looks like uh, I did not give this man a shovel. Let's go ahead and make sure we get one for him. Drop the breastwork and pick up a shovel. I'll show you how breastwork uh, works just in a second. Let's go ahead and put another position here. We'll put the machine gun on this flank. 
and we're going to continue to build mines and uh, anti-tank hedgehogs. Now, just as I did with the mines, do you remember how we uh, left-clicked and pressed shift? You can do that in this case, too, to continuously build the fences. Now, once you've given your soldiers the hedgehog kit, they have the hedgehogs for a very long time. It's essentially like an endless supply of being able to build those types of defenses. All right, let's make sure our mortar is in the trench. Sometimes the game will not allow you to go into that trench. You notice how I'm right-clicking and it won't work in there? Well, if you press control, you can tell your soldiers to walk in there and set it down. There you go. Now they're concealed, a lot harder to hit and a lot harder to see. If you're playing against another player, they might have a hard time just actually seeing that in the woods and finding out where exactly your defense is. All right, let's set up the machine gun. We'll do the same. We'll put that over here where the other trench is being dug out. And we'll continue now with barbed wire. Barbed wire is a very important part of this game that is not often used by myself because it usually gets run over or blown up very easy. But we're going to go ahead and block the road with it so that way the Soviets can't really attack us on the roadway. And it'll give that machine gun a little fighting chance against a large number of troops. Machine guns are fantastic at cutting down big numbers, but their weakness is that they have to reload and that with small numbers of crews they can easily be taken out if they're not paying attention. Uh, let's see, we have a, actually another shovel here. I wanted to grab barbed wire. So we'll set up a soldier with some barbed wire here, which is uh, right here. These spools here are barbed wire. That's what we're looking for. So just like with the hedgehogs, once you give a soldier barbed wire, they can pretty much use it endlessly until they run out. And by that, I mean they can build again and again and again, such as they've done over here. So our flanks are going to be well defended against that possible tank attack, which we'll see shortly. And we'll continue to build anti-tank because we know we're facing a tank. So if we uh, put down anti-vehicle, they're a lot faster to build, but they're going to be crushed by a tank. Speaking of being crushed by a tank, too, barbed wire can be easily driven over. And in this case, we're going to put barbed wire down with our soldier standing here on the left side of the road. And we're going to click into the woods here, which means he'll build a long line of barbed wire. Barbed wire essentially is going to just be these uh, sticks covered in barbed wire, essentially. So it'll be uh, kind of like a, uh, a large line that'll go across. Instead of just stakes with wire on the ground, it's actually a wall. And it, it can block enemy movement quite easily. However, it can be easily taken out by a grenade, an explosion, or driven over by a tank. So sometimes it's not worth the time that it takes to set up. If this were a real defense, we'd probably want to prioritize mines because it can disable or destroy vehicles, and then hedgehogs because it can funnel them into the uh, areas of attack like that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to push our Pack 40 into position. We're going to put that onto the top of the hill. Again, remember this is a 75 millimeter gun. And one thing I haven't gone over yet is that these guns and the mortars will need to be resupplied. So let's get a couple of soldiers on supply. There are three types of crates in Rob's Realism. There's weaponry for infantry ammunition. You see in the lower right corner how it says infantry ammunition crate. They all look the same, so you want to make sure you read the name in the lower right corner before moving them. The infantry ammunition is for grenades, for light arms such as machine guns, and anything that infantry can fire. Anything basically 20 millimeter or bigger is going to go to the heavy ammunition crate. So for example, mortars, tanks, anything like that can be used with the heavy ammunition crate. Now sometimes in the game there's things such as Willy Pete, which is white phosphorus, which is like a flame round or incendiary rounds, or HVAP, which is an anti-tank round. That's going to be under special shell ammunition crate. So those are the three types you'll call in. You'll probably be using heavy ammunition the most because, for example, the mortars only come with about eight rounds, so they need to be resupplied at all times. Yeah. So anytime you purchase a mortar, you're more than likely going to want to put a supply crate near it so that way it can be resupplied at all times. So now we have our heavy ammunition crate, one of them, and we'll go ahead and put this over by the mortar. The mortar will likely be taking more shots than the AT gun, and the reason is a mortar is not direct fire as where an AT gun is. For example, a direct fire weapon means that it can point with a direct line of sight to the target. So if we were trying to hit, for example, that hay bale on the other side of that hedge, that's exactly what we're going to try to hit. But a mortar wouldn't fire directly at it. It's an indirect fire weapon, which means that there's an arc that would fire up over the trees and down into the farm fields. So that will be a lot more inaccurate, but has a shot that the enemy can't block by being behind cover. All right, ammunition crate is in place. We'll have these troops dismount, and we'll grab the next ammunition crate, which is going to be for infantry. 
Now we have a lot of soldiers in that center trench, and with the Soviets coming very quickly, we're going to uh, see if we can resupply them or keep them supplied during the duration of the battle. So let's go ahead and bring over the ammunition crate over there. And the special crate we won't need, but I brought that just to show off for the time being. All right, let's go ahead and dig some more defenses for the rest of our troops. And let's see if we can speed things up here a little bit. Let's go ahead and build another uh, deep foxhole over here, or a larger foxhole. Some of these soldiers, we'll have them dig in individually on the front. And again, we're using those techniques that we learned to left click on those and then right click to do it. So select with left click twice and then dig out. Now, of course, one of the most important things to do in this game is to be like peanut butter. You always want to be spread out. Never clump your troops up unless they're in some sort of cover like this. Otherwise, they're going to have a bad time. So, for example, if the enemy's coming and you've chosen to take cover, like uh, even if you're prone like this, this might be a bad move because one shell landing right here could kill all these soldiers. So make sure you always spread everyone out, especially if uh, even if they are building defenses. Spread your defenses out even because one rocket strike can take you out. All right. Now we're going to leave our 20 millimeter up here in between the trees. There we are. And the soldiers will push that into position. If one of these men is killed or wounded, they cannot push the weapon any longer. It takes one to fire and two to move a weapon, and all weapons have two crew members, so keep that in mind in order to move them. The only thing that can be moved by one soldier is smaller mortars, and uh, those are uh, smaller than the one we've seen here, which are man portable, so you should be able to see that. All right, 20 millimeters is a great place to uh, rip up enemy soldiers anytime you see. And another trick to do, too, is if you know you're going to be defending, the enemy has this for cover, so one thing that you can do is use TNT in order to blow those out of the way and uh, actually, interestingly enough, destroy that cover or concealment that would block your soldiers from firing at them. Let's go ahead and see if we can do something about that. And let's get our Pack 40 into a position right over here, a little bit of concealment. If you click this gear, you'll notice, too, that you can fortify the position of this gun, which means they'll put sandbags out in front of it, which could block a blast. Additionally, we're going to build some breastwork over here so you can see how that works. By right-clicking and dragging, you can see that we can actually build a wall of sandbags, and we'll do that shortly. Meanwhile, it looks like some of our troops are getting into uh, some real nice positions. Additionally, machine guns can set up camouflage as well. You can place down camouflage, which will essentially be a bush, so we'll do that as well. But we're going to uh, put our machine gun over here, and I'll show you how camouflage works. Now, camouflage does not make you invisible on the mini-map or anything like that, but it will make it harder for the player who you may be against to see it. They still have the ability to see it, but it might make it harder for them to see. So that could buy you some valuable time in firing at them without them knowing where the position is. In the heat of battle, it'll take some time to discover you. If you look very closely under those soldiers, you can see a plant actually growing. Look at that. And that's what uh, camouflage is. is uh, essentially, it just makes a, p a plant pop up over you. And uh, in this case, I guess we're hiding in the wheat. So it makes it a little harder to see. Essentially, it would be camo netting or something along those lines, but that's just something to keep in mind. The breastwork is complete. You can cover behind about uh, three soldiers there. If we had a light machine gunner, we could put him there as well. So we'll put two machine gunners, or rather riflemen here, and we'll build some more breastwork just to uh, keep things interesting. Let's go ahead and build one on this side, and we'll block the road with our final soldier here, co covering our flanks and hopefully defending. All right. Our uh, AT gun is also concealed like this. Now, typically what you might want to keep in mind, though this is like, this is uber brain strategy, is that when you're playing against somebody, they're probably going to keep their camera like this, for example. So if somebody didn't, if you're, if you're not paying attention, it might be very difficult to see that gun. If you see here, if I remove all the markers, it might be very difficult for you to see that gun in the heat of battle. It's not directly exposed. You can just see the barrel popping out. So, even though we can see it easily here, when you're playing against players, they typically keep the camera pointing this direction. So that's another thing to keep in mind, as well as those mine strategies there. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get these guys off the um, supply crates. There we go. And we're going to get all of our soldiers into cover. And then we're going to launch our battle. Let's see if we can actually... Sometimes, by the way, uh, in this case, you see how one of these soldiers... The game has a little glitch where it won't 
bring up the white highlight. The game does not recognize this as cover that the soldier can attach to. So all you have to do in this case is make sure the shoulder's standing in the center of the pit there, and then just make sure he kneels down, and that essentially is the same as him taking cover. All right, let's finish up by building a few more uh, foxholes. And of course, you don't have to do all these. The one I would recommend the most is uh, these deeper foxholes here, and the reason is, is you can put multiple soldiers in there, so that way it makes it a lot harder for a position to be taken. All right, they'll finish up digging. I think we've got all of our soldiers in somewhat of a defensive position. And we'll put another one here. Our machine gun here is concealed. And it looks like we've got plenty of anti-tank defenses built, so we'll keep that where we've got them. Now, the AT gun should also have a crate, but in this case, we know we're just going to be facing off against one tank. We also want to make sure that this weapon is armed with something that can take down enemy vehicles. So in this case, the APCB... C-H-E, otherwise known as AP, or armor piercing, is what you'll want to use. Anything marked H-E is going to be anti-infantry. APCR will probably over-penetrate and just go right through the vehicle, not killing the crew. And heat is for lighter armored vehicles. So in this case, the top one is exactly what we want. In Men of War, the AI will be your worst enemy, and the AI will more than likely uh, probably try to switch to H-E on occasion, so you do need to babysit to make sure that vehicles are prioritized first. All right, with all that said, we can now start our attack against ourselves. And so now with all of our attack uh, our defenses set up, minus this one guy not being in uh, <laughs> not in his position, we'll go ahead and take a look at what the Soviets have against us today. All right, so as you may have seen earlier, we have a bunch of riflemen here, quite a bit <clears throat> actually. Our numbers are probably equal, which means that the defenses were built in order to make sure that we have a larger survivability and that we do more damage to the enemy that, than they're able to do to us. We also see something that a lot of you may have seen in World War II movies or on television or whatnot. And again, this is a very basic tutorial, so we want to do a lot of hand-holding here, which is the uh, T-34-76 Model 1943, or Mod 1943. In this case, this has a 76mm gun, which can destroy many of our tanks. And also, it has a machine gun on it as well, a coaxial machine gun in the turret and also on the side there. You might see it next to the driver's port. Now, the driver's port is here, this little square. And that's going to be a weak point as well as underneath uh, the turret down there, where all the gears and mechanical elements are to turn the turret. That's its weakest point here and here and also, of course, anything in the side. If you're playing War Thunder, then the weak point is pretty much nowhere. It's impenetrable. <laughs> but no, in this case, you can penetrate it uh, from the front, but it is very difficult. But more than likely, you're going to want to kill this vehicle from the side. The crew sits towards the front of the vehicle here, the engine somewhere towards the back, and the munition around there as well. So you'll probably want to hit it pretty much anywhere on the side. But this was a very deadly tank because of its sloped armor. Its ability to deflect shots made it a uh, real masterpiece on the battlefield. All right, let's go ahead and see if the Germans are ready for us then. We'll go ahead and start our attack, and our defense now will be automated. I'm not going to defend uh, or watch our defense. Our defense should naturally be able to defend itself, so we'll see how it goes. All right, let's get ready then to attack with the Soviets. We'll go ahead and uh, push in first with our infantry to see how they do, and then we'll bring our tank up to see if it can break the line. All right, let's go ahead and have our soldiers come up and get ready to attack. We are now taking control of the Soviets. We're going to attack in the front, but also we know that the Germans might have the uh, flank open. We're going to try to flank that machine gun position we brought up earlier. We see the barbed wire there, so we're going to bring it directly to the flank. And let's slow down things now. We're going to try to do things in slow motion, so that way you can see everything play out. Tank is moving. Infantry is coming up. And uh, we have ourselves an Ura charge. The uh, Pack 40 is ready to fire at the uh, tank when it comes through. And the Soviets, of course, are clumped up. They're not uh, playing so intelligently. But in Men of War, sometimes this is the way you need to do it in order to keep your attack going, is just to attack as quickly as possible. All right, the Soviets have grenades, and they have anti-tank grenades. Now let's pretend that we didn't know this minefield was here, so we'll send some soldiers over there to see what happens when you just rush a position. There you go. So obviously the... Uh, soldiers walking right over that. As you can see, those explosions kill or wound any soldier that's around it. So the greatest thing about those mines is that if one soldier sets it off, it could wound several soldiers that are around. So that's something to keep in mind. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look here. 
So the Germans now see the Soviets, and of course this would all be automatic that they would be firing, but I've uh, basically put it into, uh, you know, this is uh, editor mode, so they're not going to be shooting just yet. But uh, keep in mind, there's multiple fire modes that you can do in this case, uh, in Rob's. And I don't actually see the... Oh, here it is. Oh, no. Oh, looks like they may have taken that out in direct fire mode. Okay. Whoa! Hey, careful there. I was uh, getting ready to shoot at you. So with our machine guns, we can auto-fire at the soldiers that are out there. And this is the MG-34 firing now. You can see that soldier being taken down. There's a really good job of immediately firing at that infantry like that. So uh, one thing we're going to do is see if we can uh, flank a position. Apparently we have the Germans just running around mindlessly now. I should have put them on... Uh, they're on free move right now, so they're just going to walk around wherever they want. Well, let's go ahead and send some of these guys back to the line. Okay, let's see if we can flank over here then. This will show you exactly what the enemy may try to do against you. So though you may have blocked the road with the machine gun here, which you should have, because any of these soldiers are basically dead, if we, go, if we come over here, these guys are come up, gonna come up to the machine gun. So if you're assaulting a position, or if you're defending, you need to watch out for flank attacks like this. The enemy can easily walk around you and throw a grenade. So some of these soldiers just broke through. Now, of course, this isn't going to be that easy when you're playing it multiplayer. But keep in mind, if you're defending, enemy players can easily find a way around your defense, no matter how good you set them up, and throw a grenade. So in this case, uh, the grenade is going to go into the trench and will uh, kill all those soldiers inside. Now, this one of these soldiers may dive out of the trench, but in that case, it looks like all three of them perished in the grenade throw. So now the Soviets occupy this position. And during a defense, you may want to fight to take some of those back. So you can always do that. And uh, it's very valuable uh, territory in order to hold a machine gun. So that's a very incredibly important area. We'll throw a Stielhandgranade back, which is the uh, German grenade. And see if we can retake that position. And again, what I mentioned about clumping up, very important. Because several of those guys died in that grenade blast. So very important to make sure uh, that you keep those positions intact. Now again, these guys aren't necessarily going to be fighting. We're not we're not looking to see a, a full-scale uh, attack again or a, a mission play out, but we're just showing the basics of how things work. Now if you can take this position back and get the enemy to run away a little bit, of course you can unload with the MG42. Wow. And finish those guys off. Alright, we know there's some Soviets over here, so let's go ahead and uh, have it attack the ground right over here. And we'll see if we can break through as the Soviets. So you can see random bullets flying around like that. Even though we're being instructed to uh, attack in one position, you can see how effective a machine gun can be. Even when it's just firing in one position. We're taking a actual command here to shoot some of the Soviets in the woods. All right, now our big weakness is exposed. You can actually hear the machine gun reloading. Oh, it looks like he already did reload. That is the uh, greatest way to attack a machine gun position, by the way, is to wait for it to reload. So you can see how our defense really worked nicely here. Uh, these soldiers would be shooting at them as well, and this machine gun over here shooting at them as well. I've, uh, again, they're not uh, playing as they would. The AI, in this case, this battle would have been over in about four seconds because of the... Uh, density of our defense. So keep in mind that we're just showing off the tactics here and not, not showing off how it's supposed to play out, but really how to set it all up and what might happen if you do it correctly or what might happen if you do it incorrectly. And of course there's no such thing as a perfect defense. Defenses are not perfect and that's why uh, the Germans lost World War II. Alright, let's go ahead and get ready with our tank. Our tank is now going to push up. And we're going to load HE to see if we can fire at the Germans. Now, by now, that Pack 40 would have fired at us. But well, let's pretend that we don't see that. Wow, guys are still dying to, <laughs> to the mines. You can see how effective those minefields really are. All right, the, the Soviets still have a fighting chance. Let's support the tank now. And let's get the tank to fire at, for example, the 20 millimeter. Now, in this case, the 20 millimeter would have been perfect against all those soldiers. It basically fires like, for example, a grenade, an explosive shell that can explode near any of the infantry. And even if it doesn't get a direct hit, an explosion here or there may actually end up killing those soldiers. So let's see the 20mm in action a little bit. 
And let's see how exactly that would play out. Now again, we're playing in a slower motion so we can see everything play out. Actually, I think it's on armor piercing right now. Let's fire HE. Those are some armor piercing shells that can uh, destroy armored cars. But with HE, there's a bit more of an explosion, so you can see that play out here in a second. AP is fantastic against light armored cars. There we go. There you go, you see that? Enemy soldiers dying there. Almost too effective. Alright, let's try to fire the mortar a little bit. In this case, mortars are fantastic at uh, eliminating enemy soldiers that have taken cover from machine guns. So essentially, mortars and machine guns should work together. The mortars, highly inaccurate. But they don't have to be accurate because they have a very large explosion radius. If these soldiers were standing, they'd all be dead. So that's why it's good to take cover and spread out. So now the Soviets are under machine gun and uh, mortar fire. So let's see as the tank now, if it can take out the 20 millimeter. Defenses that are not in cover have a big chance of being destroyed. And uh, as the Soviets, we're gonna fire through this bale. Wow, really? That should have actually destroyed that. All right, let's try that again. Now, by now, the Pac-40 would be firing at us, and our only hope would be to position our vehicle behind these uh, hedgehogs like this. So keep in mind, as a player building a defense, if you put these hedgehogs in the way of your guns, the enemy can use it for cover, and uh, they can sneak around you or perhaps get a lucky hit. We're going to fire that 76mm gun now. Notice how, with this tank, we have it pointing directly at the Pac-40 as well. This is a very good tactic the enemy may use against you during defense, where they'll have their frontal armor facing you at all times. And in, in a case like this, you might not want to fire. The Pac-40, super capable of penetrating that armor. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and wait until that tank gives us a much better exposed shot. The other things we can use, too, are man portable anti-tanks, such as the Panzer Shrek or the Panzer Faust. And those two weapons are very good at destroying tanks from a closer range. Let's go ahead and see if we can fire an HE shell at this 20 millimeter then. And there you go. A big explosion. Now, if the enemy happens to destroy your things with high explosive shells, the explosion may kill soldiers around. If I press the V key as in Victor, you can see their troops are highlighted that have been killed in yellow for our team currently, which is the Soviets, and red, which is the Germans. So the Germans have only lost a few men, but the Soviets have lost a lot due to our defenses. All right, let's go ahead and now see how it is if this tank were to move up. Now, the Soviets have successfully destroyed that 20 millimeter, and now they're going to shoot at our defenses. Now, what we want to do with the Pac-40 is this is a nightmarish angle for us to, uh, to destroy this tank at. Now, if we're commanding the Pac-40 directly, we want to target things such as the turret to see if we can knock it off the vehicle and disable it. Definitely not the front at this mo uh, moment. It might actually work. It might destroy it. But definitely don't aim back here. One, we have the hedgehog in the way. And two, this type of slanted armor like that is probably not going to be penetrated, though it is possible. So there is a chance either that we will get an immediate kill on this tank, or it may take several shots. So let's see how it plays out. Let's take a shot first and foremost at this side. And you can see there that we hit the hedgehog. And now, actually, this is, this is a good reminder for me uh, to do something real quick. If you're attacking or if you're defending, one thing to keep in mind is if you see me or any other player doing this, this might be a bad sign. If you see a soldier coming up to a tank like that, that might mean that they're going to try to equip TNT, and they might try to blow your defenses out of the way. Artillery can do this, though it's not as effective at it, but if you're trying to clear defenses or hold defenses, one thing you want to watch out for is somebody doing something like this. And this, of course, is us taking TNT and getting ready to throw it at that hedgehog. Now this is really the only effective way to clear these hedgehogs out. Tanks can't destroy this, but artillery or big explosions such as this can knock it right out of the way. Alright, Pack 40 should be ready to fire again. Let's take another shot at that tank on the side. And look at that, a deflection right off into the sky. So this tank was able to, with its angling, and with the armor angled as well, it's uh, all sorts of <laughs> mathematics going on here to deflect that shell. Let's try to fire at the front, then, of the tank. Maybe that'll be more successful. Right off the side again, too. That angled armor is very impressive. So as the Pac-40, we're waiting more for an opportunity. Oh, never mind, it actually must have uh, 
Oh, it must have shook the crew, even though it deflected. It must have did internal damage to that tank. But what we're really waiting for here is something like this. We want an angle like that to fire at this tank. So though it may have, we may have gotten lucky there with a shot like that, it sometimes takes multiple shots to destroy a tank. And if you can get a good enough shot on the tank where you can destroy the ammunition hold, that'll make a huge explosion, which may kill all the troops that are around that vehicle. So let's try again with another shot to see if we can make a big explosion. All right, there we go. That's a nice hit on that vehicle. <laughs> that guy is completely gone. Let's try again then. This, these are the types of angles that you really want. And when you have that angle, these are the areas you want to attack. Pretty much anywhere on the side of the tank. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Going right into that ammunition. Now, if the enemy happens to have all their troops near that vehicle, this is going to be a good opportunity for us. If you are attacking, pay attention. Because you do not want to do this. This vehicle is doing what is called cooking. Yes, you can see why. So the ammunition from that vehicle has uh, lit up because of the AT shell hitting the side of it. And the armor-piercing shell went right into the ammunition. And essentially it's a pressure cooker now with all those... Uh oh, wow, look at the troops are trying to take cover too. Sometimes the AI is smart. Let's put them on hold movement for now. Even the Germans with that big explosion, some of them have left their trenches to come over and see what's going on. That's crazy. Let's go ahead and get some of these guys under uh, no, no longer move there. We'll get them back in their trenches. So this is exactly what you want to see as a player. Now the Pac-40 is capable of destroying that from the front, though it is unlikely. But the side is going to almost always be a guaranteed kill. Let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit just to see what happens. Now this, yes, this will explode again and again. This vehicle will still have the ammunition exploding inside of it. And this could cause a huge explosion later. So if you're attacking or defending, stay away from vehicles like these because they do have the chance of exploding in a huge explosion. And if they do, it'll kill all the soldiers around there. So let's go ahead and see what might happen in a case like this uh, of a big explosion. Let's go ahead and see what would happen here. Uh, let's try something like uh, this. There you go. So that's what might it, it might look like. The vehicle will go, uh, pieces will go flying. All the troops around it could be killed. You can use it as cover. And with the uh, Soviets, for example, having more expendable infantry, it, it at least now is cover for the enemy. So now we're not able to shoot anything at them with them being behind the tank. They now have the ability to take cover behind the tank. It could explode at any moment, but for now it's the, uh, big, the best piece of cover that the uh, Soviets have against us because we have all of our riflemen here and such. So the Soviets' attack has pretty much been finished off. Let's go ahead and uh, run out into the open here for one last final ura charge. Let's see if we can find out where the rest of the Soviets are here. Let's see if I can bring my uh, map up here so we can take a look at all the Soviets. I think... Oh, I essentially put them on the... Oh, that's interesting. They're actually on the same team. I didn't mean to do that. But actually, it's playing out quite nicely. So the Soviets have the ability to uh, easily shoot at us and uh, push through. So a battle will look more like this of uh, soldiers firing back and forth. So let's see if we can finish them off. The uh, Germans left their positions a little too early, thinking that they won. Let's fire back at the Soviets then. And this is usually how most of your battles will uh, play out. Let's go ahead and return fire at the Soviets from cover. There we go. And now, if you have large clumps of troops, it may be wise to equip a HE shell. If you ever see a group of soldiers like that staying stationary, this is a perfect opportunity to use that Pac-40. Let's go ahead and also use our mortar here in this case and get our machine gun to work. Yeah, come on. Right, let's get this guy to cover. Let's get our mortar to fire off. And let's get our Pac-40 to fire an HE shell. Now essentially this is like a direct fire mortar. If you're firing in your defenses, you can fire at a soldier like that and when he gets hit, he will then detonate. If you actually happen to land a hit on him and it'll kill all the soldiers around too. There goes the mortar firing as well. So you can see all these defenses really have delayed the enemy and uh, slowed them down quite a bit. All the uh, mines and everything like that did a fantastic job in, in slowing them down. Let's go ahead and attack as the Soviets still and start throwing some grenades and getting aggressive. The enemy will come for your... Uh, they will come for your mortars. They will come for your uh, anti-tank guns, so you need to be mindful of that. And they do have the ability to throw grenades. But if you're lucky, you might be able to decrew them beforehand. 
And though some of our soldiers died in that grenade attack, we can still get back on the gun. The gun is still functional, and it still has the ability to fire at enemy soldiers, or tanks, as intended. Let's go ahead and continue to shoot. Let's finish off the rest of these guys. All right, I think that does it for the Soviets here today. All right, if you have any questions, go ahead and let me know down below in the comments section. Essentially, the rest of these soldiers would be easily finished off by the AI. So go ahead and let me know any other questions you may have. Of course, this is just a very basic tutorial in building a defense and how a defense will uh, play out in the long run. It's been a, quite a long video, actually. I didn't realize how long it went. But hopefully we went over things with you in detail. If you have any tips, if you're a pro player, or if you uh, want to explain anything further, please do so down below in the comments section. And if you have questions, please do ask, and I would recommend any of our other viewers to please help out in uh, doing that. So hopefully that uh, showed you the basics of defense. This is uh, really utilized mostly in the front lines game mode or in combat. And with the new Rob's Realism Doctrine modes, there are several factions that are, sec uh, that are very specifically... Uh, dedicated towards building defenses so keep in mind that when you build these defenses your allies can use these as well and the defenses can always be used against you as well like once the uh, position has been taken the enemy can turn their guns against you so keep that in mind too all right everyone that's it for me here today thank you very much for hitting that like button and sharing with a friend i hope uh, i provided a lot of detail i hope that helped you out and again i hope a lot of people like this as well because though it's not our typical men of war episode it is a start of a tutorial series where I plan to do much more. So let me know what you want to see down below. Hit that like button. Share with a friend. Thank you for your support. Play Rob's Realism. Play Men of War. It is fantastic. You all take care. I'll see you soon.